let me write down one more thing. So I said this constant k here, that's a something called a wave number. And if you're trying to write down a simple looking expression, wave number is actually the most uh, useful quantity to work with. But it's not the most intuitive quantity. For one, um, any guesses what the unit of k is? What should be unit of k? Could you say it louder? Uh, oh, I think you are thinking of the spring constant k. So um, at some point in physics and engineering, you will see a single letter used in different ways. So this has nothing to do with the spring. It's a wave number k, not the spring constant k. So look at the e equation itself here. What unit should this k have so that the unit for everything works out correctly? Nisha? Yeah, one over a meter. That was the entire reason behind introducing this k here. So that that times something that's in meters will give me something unitless. So this k must be one over a meter. Okay. So, so wave number is a quantity that has unit of inverse meter. Do you know anything that has unit of inverse meter? I don't. There's nothing that I know that has a unit of one over a meter. So that makes a wave number difficult to relate to in an intuitive sense, at least at this level. When you do quantum mechanics, actually you can, but you know, we are not doing quantum mechanics. So, so that's why um, I want to relate this wave number k to wavelength, which will be in unit of meters. So it will be easier to intuitively relate to the quantity wavelength. So let's just work out the relationship between wave number and wavelength. I'm going to take a snapshot again. OK. So let's say we are trying to describe this wave um, in the snapshot view again. I am looking at this wave at time equals 0. Um, so I am looking at these different positions of the bead. Um, I don't think we've explicitly talked about the uh, uh, quantity that we call wavelength. But what does wavelength sound like? Like length of wave, right? And, and you know, if you are talking about the length of this string, that's infinite. It has no end. So that's not what we mean. What we are talking about when we say wavelength, it's the spatial version of a period. It's a how long of a distance do you need to go before the wave starts repeating itself again. So wavelength is something that's meaningful only for periodic wave. Because if it's not periodic, then it won't repeat itself. But if it is periodic, at some point, it's going to start repeating itself. So here, what we would describe as wave, wa wavelength is from this point to here. That's a wavelength. So, uh, and there are actually a few different ways of measuring wavelength. Let me just uh, diagram three different ways of measuring wavelength here. You could do it uh, the way I was just uh, um, motioning. Start from here, 0, and end here, because that feels like one full wave. So you could say, this is wavelength. And uh, there's a symbol that we use, a standard symbol for wavelength. Um, it's this symbol. How many have seen this symbol before? Yeah, Greek letter lambda. It's lowercase lambda. That's the standard symbol for wavelength. Um, I'm, yeah, well, I think some, yeah, I mean, like other symbols, sometimes we use this lambda for other quantities. But in the context of wave, it stands for wavelength. So this is one way to measure it. But actually, this way is somewhat prone to mistakes. Because sometimes people um, see another zero here and think that that's where your wavelength is. And it's not, because you know, after that zero, it's not repeating the same thing over. It's upside down. So if you don't want to make the mistake, one way you can measure wavelength is you can do it, uh, peak, what's called peak to peak. So this is a peak. It's the highest point on the wave. And you can keep going until you see another highest point on the wave. So this would be another way to measure wavelength, lambda. Or one last way to measure wavelength, lambda, would be what's called a um, trough to trough, the lowest point to the lowest point. 
So from here to here. And you know, I want you to see this, uh, these uh, drawings and convince yourself that these three different ways of measuring wavelength gives you the same number. So however you are measuring it, it gives you the same wavelength. Okay. All right, so that's uh, the quantity wavelength. So I guess uh, what I want to do is I want to figure out the relationship between k and lambda. So uh, let me get the correct color of the pen. So actually, I haven't used the green yet. Looking at this, and let's say I want to express k as a function of lambda. How would k be related in terms of lambda? In other words, if I wanted to rewrite this in terms of lambda, what would it look like? So let me just do the easy part. Based on the unit, you might say it's a 1 over lambda. And if you did that, you know, unit will be correct, but it won't be quite correct. You'll be missing something. So here's one way to think about it. So let's say this position is x equal to 0. right? And this position then will be x equals lambda, right? Let's say we are looking at the description of wave uh, as a function of position alone. Y of x, time equals 0, is A times sine of kx. So you know how x changes from here to here. Do you know how the value of kx changes as you go from here to here? So here, let's say kx is 0. It really can't be anything else. What is kx equal to when you are here? When you have gone one full cycle. Not zero. I mean, OK, you are wrapping it around. I, I don't want you to take modulo of whatever you are doing. Because you know it's a different point. If I say kx is equal to 0, that gives me a nonsense answer for x. I don't want that. I want a reasonable answer for x. Asia, 2 pi, right? So one cycle, one cycle is 2 pi. So at this point, what we can say is kx must be equal to 2 pi. Now we have enough information to solve what k should be. x is equal to lambda, so k is equal to 2 pi over lambda. So that's the relationship between wave number and wavelength. Wave number is related to wavelength by 2 pi over lambda. And in fact, that gives you one, another way to write down this um, form of wave. Um, that would be something like this, amplitude times sine of, and instead of writing in terms of k, we do it in terms of wavelength, which uh, is easier to relate to uh, intuitively. So we say it's uh, 2 pi over lambda times x. And then I guess I can keep this minus omega t. Okay. 